Hey, how y'all doing? It's another episode of Truth Seeking Trucker. We're getting into our Father's Word in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2. Let's begin with a moment of prayer. Father God, as we get into your message in Jeremiah 2, um, thank you for your holy word. We stand by your holy word. It's the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, Father. Thank you for uh, leaving us in, in the light and uh, in the darkness of this world. You bring us forth to to guide and direct us. Um, you don't leave us or forsake us. Thank you and give us eyes to see and ears to hear, a heart to be uh, uh, obedient to the truth and uh, be able to uh, prophesy to the, to the nations that uh, you are the one God and uh, the Almighty and that your son, Jesus Christ, died for our sins. And if we have faith in him, uh, we should have everlasting life with you, Father. And such a great thing that must be um, just uh, the time on this earth as we worship you and the feeling that we have when, you, you know, when you're in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Oh, my Lord. It's such one of the most wonderful things of this man's experiences in the world. And um, Father God, you know I'm a sinner. And uh, may this message... Uh, bring other sinners to uh, repentance and uh, and bring them to the Lord. Because at the end of the day, uh, through his righteousness are we saved. And this we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, Jeremiah 2, let's get to it. Huh? Got a lot of downtime on Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. So uh, with that, let's uh, let me get there. Okay. So Jeremiah verse chapter 2 verse 1 and it reads moreover the word of the lord came to me saying verse 2 go and cry in the ears of jerusalem saying thus saith the lord i remember thee the kindness of thy youth the love of thy spousals when thou wentest after me in the wilderness in the land that was not sown Verse 3, Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruit of his increase. And all that devour him that it shall, offend, shall offend, evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. So um, God's reminding them that I remember when you sought after me, when you seeked me, when you were uh, hungry for me, hungry for the truth and thirsty for righteousness that's in our Lord God. And um, he's, re he's reminding them of that, right? And, uh, and there's something else that was said in verse 3. Um, that I, you are the first fruits of my increase that devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them. And it reminds me of Genesis 12, 3. I will bless those who bless you and I will, when whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the people on the earth will be blessed through you. Right? These are God's, this was God's uh, uh, marriage to Jerusalem and to the people. Right. And um, he's committed, committed to them. And what we're seeing is a fallen, a great falling away. Kind of like what we're seeing today. Um, we're. Uh, we're seeing uh, people fall away from the word of God, um, people falling away from Christianity, um, people starving for the truth. And. Um, and we're seeing and we're seeing this this is not something new under the sun it's happened before in the time of jeremiah verse four as we continue in jeremiah hear ye the word of the lord o house of jacob and the families of the house of israel verse five thus saith the lord <clears throat> what iniquity have your fathers found in me that they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity and become vain so um, there is no iniquity in God. God's perfect and he's holy. And um, there is no answer that they can give him because they would just have to become to uh, the understanding that this is all done in the mistake of men, right? Men and their frailty and their weakness um, fell away from the Lord. And, uh, he walked away after vanity, right? Things that shall perish, that won't not everlasting. Um, property, prestige, fame, 
I mean, name it, money, power, women, uh, clothes, property, right? I guess maybe I said that twice. <laughs> maybe I, 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 uh, maybe that's one of my uh, issues. I don't know why I said it twice. But anyways, um, in the last part of that sentence in verse 4, and are become vain, right? And when you become vain, when you look at the word of God, I've said this before, God does not say anything in his word to fill in the space, the gaps. He doesn't make small talk in the sense that he's just saying things to say things like human beings do, to humor people, to butter them up, to uh, to get them to drop their guard, you know, whatever the um, meaning for men. You can't compare that to, with God and his holy word. So as men become vain they become vain because they fell in their own understanding all right so verse uh or continue to verse five you get there okay excuse me verse six and it reads neither said they where is the lord that brought uh, us up out of the land of egypt in the time of moses remember that led us through the wilderness god led us we let them through the wilderness after for, being disobedient. They led them for 40 years into the wilderness, but he didn't forsake them or leave them. He took care of them even and then when they were when they, he saw iniquity within the generation that um, created an idol right after they got out of Egypt. Right. That led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and the shadow of death, through a land that no man passeth through where no man dwelt these places are barren where the, the jews were at there was nothing there no man can survive it had to be a god just to understand where they were and it, it was there was no water there was no uh, way to grow things right god had to send food uh from heaven which was manna um there uh god had to uh command moses to strike a, a rock in the name in the name of god or, um excuse me not in the name of god but in the um, power of god and it would spring forth water to drink um, it didn't work out the way god planned it to and um but it is it was the intent um and that's because of man's frailty. Even as, as good of a patriarch as Moses was, he had his faults. And uh, we learn from him. We don't we don't put ourselves above anybody else because we're all sinners. Um, verse 7. And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat their fruit thereof and the goodness thereof, the land of milk and honey, the promised land. But when you entered, you defiled my land. So even the inheritance that God gave them, they, they didn't take care of it. They did like the worst thing they could have done, defiled it with false gods and false, you know, worshiping Satan, basically. All these false gods and false religions behind the scenes of Satan and made my heritage an abomination. Verse 8, the priest said not, where is the Lord? And that they, they handled the law, knew me not. And the pastors also transgressed against me. And the prophets pro professed by Baal and walked after things that did not profit. Um, oops. Did I go too far? Sorry. Let me back up. Verse 8. Verse 9. Wherefore, I will not eat yet plead you, saith the Lord, with your children's children, will I plead. So all this, um, nobody asked, where's God? Uh, where's the Lord? You know, they're all um, deceived at this point. They, they're they worshiping Baal. How did this come to be? Um, we're going to find out. So as far as, uh, you know, the shadow of death was also mentioned in verse uh, 6. We're going to go to Psalms 23 as a cross-reference. This is the Psalms after the famous Psalms 22, which, which um, 
King David prophesied that the Messiah would come and they would uh, gamble his clothes and cast lots, Psalms 22:18, And the quote of when Jesus was on the cross, God of God, how thou forsaken me was Psalms 22, 1, which was um, God was teaching us that he was fulfilling scripture, even on his last breaths. You know, it's amazing the word of God. But I read Psalms 23, and the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want to. He maketh me lie down in green pastures, flourishing pastures. Right? He leadeth me beside still waters. Three, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. For ye, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, my rod and my staff, they comfort me. You and God is the majority. If God's with you, nobody could be against you. Five, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of thy, my enemies. Thou anointest me, excuse me, anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Remember when uh, David was uh, uh, anointed by a by the prophet, right? They poured oil over him, right, on his head. Six, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What an awesome thing, right? This is, uh, this is, uh, like after, um, this is like the Psalms for the resurrection, right? Psalms 22 was like the Psalms for the crucifixion, and Psalms 23 is like the Psalms for the resurrection. Okay, we're going to get back to Jeremiah, verse 10, chapter 2, verse 10, and it reads, For pass over the isles of Chittim, and see the send into Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. So if you do a word search in the Holy Bible with the Blue Letter Bible app, or Gate Bible Gateway, the Isles of Chittim. There's only one other time it's mentioned. It's Ezekiel 27. Me, Ezekiel 26 and 27 is a study of the Isles of Tyre, right? T Y R E. And if you study that, um, I have done uh, uh, videos on Ezekiel. Uh, this was like a a, a worldwide commerce that was a a, a marine time trade center. That was really big in one time in world history. And uh, I believe people were selling themselves out for money. Right? People do it today. It's nothing new under the sun. But um, if you want to go ahead and study study that too. To get an understanding of these Isles of Chittim. And uh, you'll kind of understand what, what's going on here. All right? So. And see and send it to Kedar. And consider diligently and see if there's such a thing. 11. Hath the nation changed their gods, which are not yet gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doeth not profit. So, even these pagan and um, and uh, heathen nations, their gods, they don't change their gods. But God saying, my chosen people, the ones that I've, um, I've uh, come to, and they know that I am who I am. Um, They've changed their gods, right? And they're double-minded, right? They're quick to uh, to uh, forget about me, right? Verse 12. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horrible afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. So remember the study. We're going to learn about that study of desolation. I've done it in a word study in some of my other videos. Um, desolation first is the spiritual desolation. Then the judgment comes, and here comes the physical desolation. And God's uh, God's uh, sh telling um, Jeremiah what's going to happen if they don't turn from their ways. 13, for my people have committed two evils. Listen up. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed me them out of the cisterns, broken cisterns, and can hold no water. So... They uh they uh forsaken the living water which only comes from God in His Word the truth right 
and they replaced them with water, with uh, these vessels that are earthly and going to break and they have no power, right? They're turning to other things besides God. So God uh, sees all things. We got to understand he's telling them right now, right here, right now with the prophet Jeremiah, I see these things and I'm going to, I'm not going to leave anything in question, right? I'm letting it all be exposed, bring into the light. Verse 14, is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? Right? He's given them freedom, right? He's given them freedom as much as, as much as uh, any other nation because they know the truth, right? They've been blessed bef above all and uh, they're falling at the wayside. Verse 15, the young lion roared upon him and yelled, and they made his land waste. His cities are burned without inhabitants. Um, the pro prophet Ezekiel, there's a study of uh, the young lions reference to um, to the children of Josiah, King Josiah, Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin, and Zedekiah, right? This uh, book of Jeremiah is um, written for the the tribe of Judah as the book of Israel is written for the, the 10 northern tribes of Israel. So we're kind of getting an understanding of these uh, symbology and these references and what God's trying to um, say to us. All right. Verse, uh, verse uh, 15. Um, I think I skipped a little bit ahead. We're going to we're going to get back to. Um, Jeremiah 15, but at first, some um, there was a point where I was reading this. A word popped in my head, and it was fables. And it was it was fables. So um, we were doing a little word study. How did how did you get to this place? How did they uh, fall so far away from God, and where this judgment is falling upon his, God's people? We're, I want to know this. I want to understand this. I want to um, try to warn the audience and everything because we're in a troubling time right now. And that's why one of the reasons I started this channel is to find answers in the word of God. And we're going to find them together, hopefully. Um, it takes me to First Timothy. And then first, the Timothy is a great book for un for studying the great apostasy, which is the great falling away from the church. And it seems like more now than than before is this happening, right? For people who have eyes to see and ears to hear. First Timothy 1 4. Either give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than ungodly edifying, which is faith, and so do. So people are running to to uh, philosophy, the questions that just bring more questions. Endless genealogies that have no uh, answers. Um, these are uh, ways where people are start falling away and become consumed towards trying to find answers that there are none. Right? Stay away from that stuff. You're wasting your time. We have one life to live, and you can't buy back time. Right? God's warning us. And First uh, Timothy four six through eight. It reads, from which, from which some, having swerved, have turned aside into a vain jangling. So again, they're chasing after vain things, vain things that will um, rust and will decay, things that won't are not everlasting. Seven, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whether they affirm. They're uh, they're they're not even trying to understand what they're what they're what they're saying. And what they're doing, right? Um, excuse me. Oh, sorry. I, um, it's First Timothy four. First Timothy four six to eight, and it reads: um, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things. Thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, right? Nourishing up in the words of faith and good doctrine where thou hast attained. So 
there this is uh timothy teaching us to uh tighten up our um our ministry to uh make sure that that our ministry is is um uh, is uh beyond reproach right to understand god's word discerning to teach chapter by chapter and verse by verse verse seven but refuse profane and old wise fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness right so uh to weed through the um the the wheat and the tares right what's going on what's uh what's true and what's uh false right um the word of god if anything's ever contradicting towards the word of god it's not from god right um i've come to some truths in my walk with the lord and uh in my discernment i've discerned that um god uh jesus christ and the holy spirit will never contradict each other ever and that includes the word of god will never contradict any of them either so when any kind of book or any kind of doctrine contradicts the word of god it is not of god and you can be you can take that to the bank i promise you first uh eight um for bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness and profitable unto all things, having the promise of life that it now is and of that is which to come. So, uh, leaning and relying on God, standing next to God's word, um, knowing that when God says something, it is the truth, right? Understanding, not having doubt. Um, sometimes you you got to weed through that. You got to ask questions. Don't be afraid to uh, to ask God for answers, right? Um, you know, there was a time when this guy right here um, hoped there was a God. And I read the Bible and I was like, I hope I'm not. Um, I hope that, you know, the Lord is real because it sounds like such a beautiful thing. But I didn't challenge that idea. I kind of thought well i'm supposed to be um i'm supposed to be obedient i'm supposed to do these things i don't want to say there isn't a god but if there, you know and it's a good moral compass you know what really happened was i was being lazy i wasn't praying i wasn't into the word of god i wasn't challenging that idea and these lies and these, uh, you could be in the fiery darts of satan working on me he was appealing to my laziness appealing to my lack of um of being hungry <clears throat> right and uh he fed me with something some lies and i had to god had to come and and get all that stuff out and uh i challenge you to do the same to to search and seek and god will answer that door second timothy four three through five and it reads for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but their own lust well, they should heap to themselves, teachers having itching ears. Verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall turn into fables. Uh, they'll turn into lies. You know, they want that newest, uh, newest thing, you know. There's nothing new under the sun, right? God's the same as he was in the beginning, now, and forevermore, right? We, we, uh, we're not going to uh, get this uh, different approach to God. God's very, it's, God gives his word and it's simple enough for a child to understand in some ways, right? And, uh, and, the, and with that, you know, there, we're not trying to get knowledge and wisdom so we could have one upmanship on our brothers and sisters. You know, we all want to come to the Lord. We all want to know the truth, but there's itching ears, uh, they're, you're trying to get the newest uh, fad. You know, they're trying to get the newest doctrine. No, just just uh, dwell in the presence of the Holy Spirit and, and, and bask that Jesus Christ's yoke is, is easy. The fight has already been done. The debate is over. Christ wins. The devil loses, right? God wins. Um, his kingdom will reign forever. So... Um, Verse 5, but watch though in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. 
be a man beyond reproach. Okay, go into the book of Titus 1, 13 through 15, and it reads, This witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in their faith. 14, not given heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from truth. 15, unto the pure, and all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. Right now, the big thing right here is Jewish fables, right? So this kind of gives me a warning in the end of times that, you know, there's going to be Jewish fables coming out of Jerusalem and to deceive God's holy people again. And I believe um, it was that's how this started in the time of Ezekiel, the time of Jeremiah, the time of Daniel, all this so oh, we're gonna um we got something new that we haven't had let's go ahead and uh um uh, present this to the people because they need to hear about this and um it's it started drawing people away from god it started drawing people away from god now there is no man and it says jewish fables and commandments of men there is no man above god that includes the jews that includes the jews and you can take that and say that you can try to, to defame my my character by saying that um, uh, I'm anti-Semitic. But guess what? It says it right here in God's word. So, yes, the Jews were God's chosen people. But if they turn away, that's and this is what's going on um, in the time of Jeremiah, it will happen again in this great apostasy of, of Timothy that I, through the studies of, um, I believe, Revelations 1818, that great city um, that's going to fall is going to be at the time of, Jer it's going to be in Jerusalem, right? I believe Jerusalem in Revelations is going to be the harlot again, right? Because they were um, prospering and uh, they were turning to uh, vain, um, vain things. And uh, a remnant will be saved, right? God's not done with the Jews, but I'm out here to warn. Just because um, it was first presented by the Jews doesn't mean it's unfallible, right? You have to filter things what a man says through the word of God, regardless of who they are. I don't care who they are, right? And this is, I hope, that you take as your, as your armor of God and to um, test the spirit, right? Again. Pray for the Jews to that they all come to know um, the Lord, right? And some do. Some do, and we're happy for that. Okay, back to the book of Jeremiah. Verse 15. The young lions roared up in him and yelled, and they made his land waste. His cities were burned without inhabitants. 16. And also the children of Noph. Tall fans have broken the crown of thy head. Verse 17. Hast thou not procured into thyself, and thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he had led them by the way? So what happens here is Zedekiah made it, um, and uh, Jehoah Chin, I believe, or Kim, one of them. They're, they're making allies with Egypt to protect them from Nebuchadnezzar, who was the the po great power of that time in the earthly realm, obviously under God, right? Who is the sovereign power of, of all, but in earthly power, they were the top empire at the time. And God sees that, that his people are turning to these allies when they should have turned to him, right? So verse 18 and now thou hast done to do in the way of Egypt to drink the water of Sihor, and thou hast to do in the ways of Assyria and to drink the waters of thy river. So you can drink out of the Nile or you can drink out of the Euphrates, but it will not satisfy you. Only the living water will sustain you. Only the living water that comes from God, that comes from his son, Jesus Christ. Right? He's telling them you're, you're doing it all wrong. I see every angle. You can't fool God. 19. God knows when, when the beginning and, and the start and, and the end of, of your downfall. 
and he's laying it all in front of you. 19. Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore they see that if any evil thing and bitter, that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord God of hosts. So they don't fear God anymore. They try to forget God. Right? And I like this saying by J.C. Riles. Backsliding generally first begins with neglect of private prayer. So they're not speaking to God anymore. 20. They're becoming religious. For the old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands, and thou saidest, I will not transgress, and thou upon thy high will I under green tree thou wanderest plain the harlot. So they're just turning after anything that comes by them, right? Any a new religion, any new uh, doctrine, you know, in, in the times we are, the new age of, of thinking of uh, religions, you know, doctrine of, of uh, you know, things that are not of God's word. You know, what, do you know what they are? Do you see the terrors in the church? Do you see the terrors in other denominations? If you don't, I'm telling you, you're, it's, you're not reading God's word because it's real easy once God lays it out for you. So start paying attention and reading God's word. 21. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine who lay rightly with a right seed and how that I turned in the degenerate plant or straight vine unto me. So who is that um, good vine? I believe it's in John 15. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe it's um, giving... Uh, um, uh, kind of a, a hidden message to Christ coming. 22. For through they washed thee with the nitre and took taken thee much soap, yet thy iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord God. So you uh, think you're clean by doing your uh, your uh, rituals and and things to cleanse yourself. But you're not right with me. I see the iniquity. I see the stain of sin. 23. How canst thou say I am not polluted? I have not gone after Balaam. See thy way in thy valley. Know thou hast done. And thou hast swift drum, drum dairy traversing her ways. So, you know. They're seen as Baal worship. Same old story, right? Canaanite, Phoenician gods, right? Here's some Bible verses you can cross-reference if you're not familiar with Baal worship. 24, a wild ass used in the wilderness that snuffed up in the winds at her pleasure and her occasion could turn her away. All they seek her and not weary themselves in the month will they find her. So it's a um, wild donkey in heat. She's sniffing to the air to find her her pleasure or her uh, mate. And um, this is kind of a symbology of what God's people is doing to, uh, to seek out other gods, right? Seek out new ways to, uh, you know, itching ears, seeking fables, right? Things that make them feel good, uh, pleasures of the flesh. 25, withhold thy foot from being unshod and thy throat from thirst but thou sayest thy is no hope no for i have loved strangers and after them i will go so they go on they're, they're, same thing they're going after um everybody but god and god is the only one that's forever 26 as a thief is ashamed when he is found so is the house of israel ashamed they the kings the princes and their priests and their prophets so Everybody has, all the leadership positions have failed to keep the people um, on the good path towards uh, towards everlasting life. Verse 27. Saying to a shock, thou art my father, and to a stone thou hast brought me forth. For they have turned their backs unto me, and not their face. But in the time of the trouble, they will say, arise and save us. So... You know, when things start getting bad, they come back to God, right? You got to remember, come to God when times are good, too, 
right? God, I'm not speaking for the Almighty that He's not going to save you when you're in peril times and you've turned your back towards Him. I'm not going to say that because God is, is is He decides what He does, but don't push it to that point where you're just only coming to Him when you need something, right? It's almost like a selfish child that never learns, right? Becomes an adult and stays selfish. Only come in when they need something. Have a handout. It's kind of hurtful, right? 28. But where are the that gods and thy hast made thee? Let them arise if they can save thee in the time of trouble. But according to the number of cities are thy gods of Judah. So God's saying, well, what about the gods that you've been praying to? Why can't they help you? God's making them understand you you're doing it all wrong. You're doing it all wrong. And you got a, a God on every street corner. And can any of them helping you? Oh, now you remember me. Well, why did you let it get to this point? All right? That's the question, people. 29. Wherefore I will plead with me, you all have transgressed against me, saith the Lord. 30. In the vein, I have smitten your children. They have received no correction. Your own sword hath devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. Every time God sent them some, somebody to, to um, give them the truth, they've killed them. Right? It reminds me of uh, Luke. Um, what was it? Uh, Matthew. There's some so in this uh, meme right here. It is Matthew. 23, 34 through 39, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, which killest the prophets, and astoneth them, are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings? And ye have not beheld your house is left unto the, ye desolate. And verily I say unto you, ye shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of Jehovah. Right? This is uh, God. This is Jesus Christ saying that you know you're not going to see me again until you cry out to me, right? There's a lot of rejection going towards Jesus. Isaiah 53. Read it. If you're if you're anybody in a, another country that hears hears and says that Christ um, Christ was not in the Old Testament. Read Isaiah 53. Tell me who that is. Jeremiah 2, 31. O generation, see the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness? Wherefore, say, my people, we are lords. We will come no more unto thee. 32. Can a maid forget her ornaments or bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without numbers. So this is not something new. This has been going on for a while. And that's why the farther you, you stray away from God, the worse it gets. You know, if you're backsliding, turn back to repent and turn back to the Lord. Um, this is not, uh, we're not trying to get a perfect score on this. Um, you know, and, and if you think you're going to stay away from God and get right with him before you come back to God and ask for forgiveness, you're doing it backwards. You come to God with a repentant heart, with a yearning to, to, uh, to do right by him. And, uh, God will help you along, do the things that you're weak at and give you the, the character, um, to do the right thing. 33, while trimmest thou the way to seek love therefore hast thou taught the wicked ones thy ways so all this false teaching and doctrine the devils false religions um fables you're teaching the young ones and it's becoming a generational curse you're you're uh it's a it's you know family member teaching family member and it's and it's like you know will continue until something bad happens and something um, needs to happen. 34. Also in thy skirts is found the blood of the soul of the poor innocents. I have not found in by secret search, but upon all these. So he sees the blood uh, on their hands too as well. 35. 
Yet thou sayest, because I am innocent, surely his anger shall turn from me. Behold, I will plead with thee, because thou sayest, I have not sinned. 36. While gaddest thou about so much to change thy way, and thou shalt be ashamed of Egypt, and thou shalt be ashamed of Assyria, because they're, they're not going to help you. 37. Ye that shall go forth with him, and thy hands upon thy head. When you do that, it's a symbol of shame. For the Lord has rejected thy confidence, and thou shalt not prosper in them. You're not going to prosper in Egypt. You're not going to prosper in Assyria. You're going to prosper with me, saith the Lord God. And with the head, hands on your head, you're going to be in shame. So, Jeremiah was told to, to, to speak this to the people. And so you will. So, God bless you. Take care and have a great night.